Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about distributed loading. In engineering, in addition to the point load that we talked about before, there are examples that the load is distributed on a surface, like a pressure of a wind on a traffic sign, or the pressure of a water uh, at the bottom of a tank. In these examples, we are dealing with load that is distributed along a surface. So in that case, our job is to find the magnitude and the location of the equivalent point load. So if we have a distributed load on this beam, working and dealing with distributed loading is challenging. So we want to find an equivalent load that will represent our distributed loading. So we need to find two properties of this resultant force. One is the magnitude. The other is the location where this load is being applied. Sometimes it's referred to as X bar, the location of our point load. So let's just start with some examples. Let's say we have a beam that we have distributed loading across the beam and the value of this distributed loading is four Newton per meter. So every meter we are gonna have four Newton. If our beam is three meter long then we can find the equivalent load. Can you guess what would be the equivalent load? You are right, 12 Newton. 4 times 3 would be 12 Newton. If every meter is 4 Newton, and then we have 3 meter, so at the end we have 12 Newton. And where is this acting? is acting in the middle. So if our beam is 3 meter, it's acting at 1.5 meter because our load is uniformly distributed. What if our load is not uniformly distributed? What if our beam is under a load which is the shape of a triangle? And then this largest load is 4 Newton per meter, and our beam is again 3 meter in length. What would be the equivalent? In this case, it would be 6 Newton. Because we can think of it as half of a rectangle. If a rectangle was 4 times 3, 12, so a triangle is half of that. So is 4 times 3 divided by 2, which gives us our resultant force. But where is it acting? Later on, we will prove that the resultant force on a triangular distributed loading is two-thirds from this side. So two-thirds of three would be two meter and one-third from the right side. So again, we are going to prove this, but for now, we are going to learn it as a fact that the resultant force on a triangle would be one-third from the right side, from this side. So if our beam is three meter long, the load is acting one meter from the right side. So, so far we have covered rectangular loading and triangular. What if we have a combination of the two? Let's say we have loading
that looks like a trapezoid. It starts with two Newton. And then it goes up. To four Newton per meter. What would be the result and force in this case? And if the length is again the same as three meter. We can think of it as a combination of a rectangle and a triangle. So this is our rectangle and this would be our triangle. For the case of a triangle, we have FR1, that would be 2 Newton meter times 3, that would be 6 Newton. And in case of our triangle, this distance is now 2 Newton meter and would be 3, so FR2 would be 2 times 3 divided by 2. So FR1 would be 6 Newton and FR2 would be 3 Newton. FR1 is acting 1.5 meter and FR2 is acting 1 meter from the right side. Now we're going to go and look at another example. So, so far we have covered uniform, triangular, and trapezoidal distributed loading. Now what about if our load is a function of x? Let's say we have our beam. It's again 3 meter. But we have a load. That is following a function. Let's say that function W is the distributed load is x squared, where x is the coordinate from the left side. So here would be 9 uh, Newton. What would be the resultant force? So we have to find integration here. So FR would be the area under the curve or WDX. In this case, W is X squared. What is the range? X from zero from here going to three meter, so three. So I will have x cubed over three after integration, zero, three. That gives me nine Newton. So this nine Newton and this nine Newton are not, they're not always necessarily the same. So we are, if this one was x cubed, you would have got a different answer. So this is the value that we are going to have at this point. So we can conclude that Wx is the intensity of loading along the length of a member. What's the unit of the, the distributed loading? It's Newton meter or pound over foot. In 1D, let's say if we have an area and then we have distributed loading acting on that area, 
that distributed loading might be presented as Newton over meter squared. So that depends on the problem, whether it's 1D or 2D. But in this class, most of the distributed loading that we deal with are 1D, so the unit is Newton meter or pound over foot. So for this problem, we found the, the resultant force, but now we want to find where it's acting. X bar. So to find X bar, we know one thing. If these two forces are going to be the same, if these two beams are going to be equivalent, the moment that they create about this point should be the same, whether we are using the right side or whether we are using the left side. So if I set the two moments equal, saying that, okay, the moment about point A here would be F or X bar, and the moment about point A here would be W X DX, then I can find X bar. So I'm going to write it here. FR X bar should be the same as WX DX. If I rearrange the equation to get X bar, I will get WX DX over FR, which is W DX. Remember, FR is W DX. So if I want to find X bar for my previous problem, the previous problem W was X squared times X DX, ranging from 0 to 3, and W DX is simply FR. So I found it for the previous problem, which was 9. So I'm just going to write 9. I'm not going to calculate it again. So that would be x cubed in total after integration would be x fourth over 4, 0, 3, divided by 9. So that would be 3 to the fourth, 4 times 9. 3 to the fourth divided by uh, 9, that would be 81, that would be 9. So 9 divided by 4. So 2.25. So x bar 2.2.5 meter. And if you look at the problem, 2.25 meter actually makes sense. If it is 3 meter, the resultant force is going to be somewhere here. So that's how we find the resultant force and the location of that resultant force for a distributed loading.